People often call the Bible just one book, but it's actually a collection of writings by more than 40 authors in different languages like Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. These authors likely didn't know each other, contributing to the challenge of reading it due to the vast spans of time. However, fret not. In this video, we'll unfold the entire story of the Bible in just 10 minutes. Stay tuned and don't miss out. Long ago, before anything existed, before there was anywhere or anything, there was God. He is everywhere and everything, the very essence of existence. He has it all, so there's nothing he needs. At first, it was shapeless and dark, but God said, let there be light, and now we have light. God separated the light from the darkness and named things. The water below is now separate from the water above. There's dry land, and life begins with plants. Plants might have even cleaned up the air, and now we have the sun, moon, and stars. Animals fill the water, air, and land. Then God created the first human, a man named Adam. God made a fantastic garden for the man he created, but he was lonely, so God gave him a wife. Though these two humans are made from the same stuff, they're also different, allowing them to have a relationship. God blessed them with many trees, but two were very important. They could eat from one and live forever, but the other was off limits. Eating from it meant death. A snake, who was actually the devil, tempted them, saying eating from the forbidden tree would make them powerful like God. Eve and Adam, agreeing, ate from it, breaking God's rules. By choosing Satan over God, humanity lost access to the tree of life, facing the consequence of death. God could have ended humanity, but he didn't. Instead, they were banished. God said one day, one of Adam and Eve's kids would defeat Satan. But since Adam and Eve already messed up, Let's see how their kids do. Adam and Eve then give birth to Cain and Abel, their first children. In the course of growing up, Cain gets mad at his brother Abel, who's better at trusting God. God tells Cain to resist doing wrong, but Cain kills Abel out of jealousy. Moving on, God tells Noah to build an ark, and people laugh until a big flood wipes everyone out, leaving only Noah's family and all the animals that were inside the ark. After the flood, God promises not to destroy the world again until Satan is defeated. Now, people should be more decent. God's not fixing everything yet, but he's making it stable for the future. Now, people aren't as bad as before, and they can work. People live together in society, but they became so evil that they wanted to build a huge tower to reach God, fueled by their pride. God saw that evil people with too much power could be dangerous, so he made the tower fail by confusing their language. Now people formed different nations, each with its own gods. God had an idea. What if there was one nation devoted to the true God? So he chose Abraham to be the father of this special nation. God updated the covenant, promising to make a nation that would help fix the world. God assured Abraham that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars, even though Abraham was worried because his wife was very old. Despite this, Abraham kept faith. Sadly, Abraham wasn't the chosen one to defeat Satan, as he still sinned by lying about his wife to a king. But they did have kids. One of them struggled with God, so he was named Israel, and his children became the twelve tribes of Israel. Sin was still a problem, and things got dysfunctional. They even sent Joseph to slavery in Egypt. But God gave Joseph the ability to save Egypt from starving, and in a remarkable act of forgiveness, Joseph welcomed his family to live with him in Egypt. God was praised by his people. God turned a bad situation into a good one. At first, Egypt liked the Israelites, but when there were too many, Egypt enslaved them. Moses, an Israelite, saw an Egyptian mistreating his fellow Israelite, so he defended him. Moses had to run away from Egypt, lived in the middle of nowhere, married, and lived happily. One day, God appeared to Moses in a burning bush, saying, It's time for the Israelites to have the land God promised. God told Moses to ask the leader of Egypt to let his people go. Moses went to Pharaoh, saying, Let my people go. Pharaoh said no, but God gave Moses the power to bring plagues. Pharaoh still said no, until the last plague when the firstborn sons died. Finally, Pharaoh agreed to let the Israelites go. The Israelites head to the promised land, but Egypt changes its mind and sends an army to bring them back. They get cornered by the Red Sea. But Moses makes the waters part for them to escape. When the Egyptians try to follow, the sea comes back, and they're in trouble. 
At Mount Sinai, God gives them laws through Moses, including the Ten Commandments. Moses warns not to worship false gods, but the people get bored and make a golden calf to worship. Meanwhile, God's presence descends on the mountain, and Moses gets the commandments on stone tablets. Angry at the people worshiping a false god, Moses smashes the tablets, but he gets new ones. God adds to the covenant, promising land and law if they're faithful. Approaching the promised land, they find evil Canaanites with strong fortresses and big soldiers. The Israelites have to fight to take over the land. Come on, guys, be brave, says one. God is with you. No, we're too scared, says the other. The Israelites turn away, not invading the land, showing they lacked faith in God's covenant. Their punishment is wandering in the desert for 40 years. Moses, who didn't do anything wrong, won't enter the promised land and will die before that because he sinned by performing a miracle the wrong way. The next generation, led by Joshua, enters the land, uses trumpets to take down Jericho, and drives out the Canaanites. Now they have their land, but who will rule? God appoints judges to defend the people from enemy nations. A pattern repeats. Peace, laziness, enemy conquest, turning back to God, regaining land. This happens many times. Tired of the cycle, they want a king. Samuel warns against it, but they insist. Saul becomes king, but he's oppressive. Samuel anoints David, a shepherd and musician, as a better ruler. Facing a giant warrior, Goliath, David steps up to fight. David, the hero, uses his slingshot to hit Goliath and becomes loved by everyone. Saul, the king, gets jealous, wanting to kill David. David flees, but Saul forgives him later. When Saul dies, David becomes the king. Things start well, but David sins by having another man killed to take his wife. God makes everything go wrong for David. However, God promises that one of David's descendants will be a king with a kingdom covering the whole world, lasting forever. This is added to the covenant. Maybe David's son Solomon can be the future king. Solomon starts well, asking God for wisdom and impressing kings and queens with his wise sayings. He builds a beautiful temple making his kingdom a shining light, glorifying God. However, Solomon sins by having many wives and worshiping foreign gods, leading to a downfall. The kingdom faces challenges, splitting into Israel and Judah with evil kings worshiping pagan gods. Despite this, great prophets arise, encouraging people to turn back to God. Some good kings reform the temple, reminding people of God's covenant. Israel falls to Assyria, Judah to Babylon, and the temples are destroyed. The prophets, however, advocate restoring, reviving, and retaking the temple. Some good kings listened and reformed the temple, reminding people of God's covenant. Despite this, Israel fell to Assyria, Judah to Babylon. The temples were destroyed, and the Israelites were carried off to exile. Later, a nice Persian king allowed the Israelites to return and even gave them money to rebuild the temple. They were excited, thinking it might be the time for the eternal kingdom. While rebuilding, some felt disappointed, realizing it wasn't like before. Although not the time for the eternal kingdom, they still had faith in God's covenant, believing it would happen. Also, prominent religious groups such as the Pharisees and Sadducees emerged within the Jewish community and gained considerable power and influence with the people. The New Testament talks about Jesus, who is God's promised Messiah, he came to fix our relationship with God. Jesus did amazing things like turning water into wine, healing the sick, and even raising the dead. But some didn't like him and got him crucified. Surprisingly, Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus, the Son of God, came to earth to bring salvation to each one of us and eternal life for everyone. He also died to take over our sins. The Bible also says that Jesus will come back. If you believe in him, You'll be with him forever and ever. No more sin, pain, or sadness. Revelation is the last book in the Bible. It's written by John, revealing visions about future events and the end times. It's a unique book called Apocalyptic and gives encouragement, hope, and warnings to Christians. Understanding different views on Christ's return, millennial reign, and the Great Tribulation helps interpret Revelation and end times theology. That's the Bible story summed up just for you. Okay guys, we've come to the end of this video. 
Don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button so you can get notified when other great videos like this are released.